Hello POE people. This is a short review about assignment three when we're calculating force vectors. The first thing you were asked to do is to draw a free body diagram of the nail that's experiencing these two vectors. So here's a simple free body diagram. We have the nail represented by the dot. It has its force normal and the force of gravity. And then it also has two different vectors, one at 5 newtons and one at 9 newtons. So to, to represent them correctly, we would have the one line definitely longer than the other. So that was the first part of the assignment. That was pretty simple. Then you were asked to calculate the x and y components of the resultant vector. Well, first of all, you'd have to find the sum of the x components of both vector A and vector B. And so I followed the method that we looked at with Mrs. Wilson's video and I sketched them both here. They are both 30 degrees from the negative y-axis, but if I start from the positive x-axis, that means that vector A is 300 degrees off of the positive x, and that vector B is 240 degrees off the positive x. So to find the sum of the x, I use uh, the force of the vector times the cosine of the angle, and I would do that for every vector I have working there. So I'm having the sum of those two forces. And so I have vector B is 5 newtons times the cosine of 240 because it's 240 degrees off of the positive x plus the force of vector A, which is 9 newtons, times the cosine of 300 because that's how many degrees it is. And when I calculate that out, I get negative 2.5 for vector B and 4.5 for vector A, and when I sum those together, the forces in the X are equal to 2 newtons. Do the same thing for Y. I sum them up. I have vector B and I have vector A, but now instead of using the cosine, the only thing I change is I change it to the sine function. And so when I take the forces times the sine of the angles, work my way down just like I did up above, I get negative 4.3 for vector B and negative 7.7 .7 for vector A, which gives me a total of negative 12.12, .12, which makes sense. If you think about that, use common sense. And first, well, they're almost pulling in the same, uh, they're at the same angle, but vector A is pulling a little stronger. So we would expect to be skewed in the X direction to the positive, which it is, two Newtons. But they're both pulling negatively in the Y direction. So we would expect a bigger number down there. And we do have a bigger number. So at least using common sense, that makes that makes good sense. Next thing it asked you to do was find the uh, sketch out the resultant angle, re resultant vector, I'm sorry, and here it is. All right, so what you do is you just say, well, you're just sketching it. So I say, well, it's 12 units down. So if I just say that's 12 units and on the negative y, and it's two units over on the positive x, I get a rectangle something like that represented by those dashed lines. My vector runs from the zero, zero point to where that rectangle is. And then I have my right triangle, and I can easily figure out the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. So I got a squared, b squared, get the square root of that. And my magnitude of this resultant vector is 12.28 newtons. That's a sketch. If I want to find the angle, the resultant angle, that's when I use my negative uh, signs and I'm going to use tangent. I have opposite over adjacent TOA so I'm going to use the inverse tangent TOA of opposite over adjacent and when I do that I get 9.37 degrees. And so to wrap it all up if you come over here the resultant vector has a magnitude of 12.28 newtons. It has a direction that is 9.37 degrees counterclockwise from the negative y-axis, and its sense is down and to the right. So that nail, with those two forces acting on it, feels that resultant force. Please be sure in your answers you always draw rectangles around what you want me to see, and that's what it should look like. 